We brought you the demonstration earlier this week against the Tennessee General Assembly's drag show bill. The head of Knox Pride said that if it becomes law, changes would likely come to Pride Fest and the city's Pride Parade. With the group uncertain about what is and is not affected by the measure, supporters of the change insist, though, it has been mischaracterized that it is actually limited to adult-oriented performances. Now remember, this issue came to Knoxville in December with a Christmas-themed drag show at the Tennessee Theater. Protesters were outside holding signs, worried about kids potentially seeing the show. We took the issue to attorney Greg Isaacs. He joins us now, our Six on Your Side legal analyst. Greg, it's always great to have you here. It's good to be here, Bob. This is a topic. It's big in Nashville, obviously, at the state capitol, but really just, just about every community across the state right now. It is. It's a hot topic in Tennessee and, and throughout the country. What this bill does is targets male and female impersonators, and it limits uh, adult cabaret performances that are adult-oriented uh, uh, that are deemed to be harmful to minors. And it prohibits those performances on any public property or a place that could not is, could be frequented by minors, and both the penalties are, are fairly uh, significant. Uh, the first offense is a Class A misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. uh, second offense is a Class E felony uh, that carries two, one to two years in jail. Is this including like male and female impersonators, I guess, to that category that you're talking about? It, 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 it targets them exactly. And, yeah. and think about there are, and the ACLU has said if this becomes law, and, and Bo, it inevitably will. It has passed the Senate, now goes to the mm -hmm. House. Um, they are going to uh, challenge this, uh, asserting that it's unconstitutional. And, you know, they'll probably have pretty good legal standing on two is issues. Uh, the first is a First Amendment challenge, because mm -hmm. uh, basically what you're doing is government is limiting uh, free speech. And when, when you do so, uh, it's a strict scrutiny uh, analysis. Basically, the, the government has to have a narrowly tailored governmental interest in limiting the speech. And in this uh, context, it's male and female impersonators. Uh, the other important challenge in this bill uh, really is, is raising some eyebrow, eyebrows based on not what it says, but what it doesn't say. Mm. Uh, it, critics have said it's uh, unconstitutionally overbroad and vague. Now think about this, Bo. Yeah. Uh, Adult-oriented cab cabaret mm -hmm. performances that are harmful to minors. Well, who sets the standard as to what is harmful to minors? Uh, you know, it kind of goes back to the days when Elvis Presley would get arrested uh, in, in Mississippi, but not in Memphis. Uh, where are the community standards and where is that constitutional line going to be drawn? But if you're the pride parade, um, is a parade a performance? Uh, I would not want to be the one to find out. Uh, so uh, if you're watching the Super Bowl and right. you have uh, someone, Janet Jackson, dressed as a, a, a male gangster doing a performance, does that violate Tennessee law? Right. Um, so it goes back again to that line, and as you mentioned, that's kind of where Knox Pride comes into all this. They're trying to figure out, too, where that line falls as far as the future of the festival here. Right. And this bill really, unfortunately, raises yeah. more questions uh, than it does provide answers, but um, I think this will be one that will go maybe to not only our highest court, right. uh, but the United States Supreme Court. All right, Greg, we'll end there. Thank you, sir.